There are many places in Chazal that we see that people had supernatural powers, and it's scattered throughout the Shas, and the one that lists them together is the Stifler in the Kilot Yaakov, Baba Kama Siman Lametet, and he writes that there are three categories, and we're going to try to learn these three categories of the supernatural powers of a person that looks with his eye at somebody else and is able to accomplish with that all kind of things. One category that he says is one that looks at another with, um, with astonishment, with feeling uh, very amazed by what, what he's seeing. That is also something that could hurt somebody, just the fact that you look at him with such an excitement. And secondly, is a category of a person that gets jealous of the other person and this is what we call Ainara, that also has powers to hurt somebody else. And the third category is a category of looking at somebody as an anger or somebody that you want to punish, and you look at him in such a way that you're able to punish just by the look of the eye. And this is something that a person needs to be in a certain level, like a big rabbi, a big Talmud Chacham, somebody that has those abilities and powers and is able to do that. Doha Chaim HaKadosh explains that each person has some things that make him, the, gives him the, give him the chayut, make him revive the nefesh. And when a person looks at him in that way, he withdraws those things that revive him, that give him the chayut, and therefore, all is left out of him is gal shel He's left without the neshama that continuously brings him back and makes him move and makes him life and makes him go his own way. So, we have over here three categories. Let's try to see each and every categories and the examples that the Gemara gives to each and every one. So the first category we said, when you look at somebody in, in amazement, in a way of uh, astonishment, and we found few gemarot that have to do with that. Let's read the words of the stipler. He says the following. The first one is a person that doesn't mean at all to hurt the other person. Rak You look at him in such a, 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 a way of astonishment. The fact that he's more successful than others in a certain thing. Sometimes by doing that, you could damage the other person because the eye has such powers. We found the Gemara in Baba Batra, Dafyu Dalid. The Gemara says the following. Interesting that the Alacha says that a person needs to write a Sefer Torah that the length and the width would be the same, uh, the same, the same, the length and the width when you close up the Sefer Torah. And the Gemara says over here that Rav Huna, Katav Shivim Sifre Deoraita, Rav Huna wrote 70 Sfarim Sifre Torah. Velo Itramule El Achad. He was able to get out of the 70 only one that the length and the width would be equal. Rav Achabar Yaakov, Katav Chad. Amishcha de Igle, he wrote, Rav Achabar Yaakov wrote only one Sefer Torah. And on the first one, he tramele. On the first one, he got it right, the length and the width. Yavu berabanan enayu venachnafshe. Chachamim put their eye on him, and he died. Now the stipler says, obviously, they, did not, they didn't try to punish him. They were very excited. They saw something very amazing. They're not trying to punish him. He didn't do anything wrong. And these are Chachamim. They're not, they don't have such uh, evil intention. So obviously what was over here going on is just an excitement for seeing somebody so successful or getting it right on the first time. Such a talent. And that caused him to die. This is one example that the stipler brings. A second example that the stipler bring, brings is the following. Gemara in Yevamot, that the Gemara says over there, that there was um, Abaye and Rav Papa that were learning. And Rav Papa was saying things that are very, very br brilliant. Rav Abaye asked him, Amar le avu checha, where is your father? Amar le bemata, in the city, not here. Imach eicha, where is your mother? 
He told him, Bemata, in the city, not here. So he told him, and this is how Ashi explains, that Abaye felt, it looks to me, it seems, it appears like your father and mother are here in the city right by you in order to serve you with anything you need. So, you, so that gives you a sharpness in the learning. A person that has constant help from his father and mother could be much more sharp in his learning, he's saying. And therefore, since he said such a thing, the Gemara says, Yahiv by Ene Veshchivan. As soon as Abaya looked at it at the wrong way, what happened? They died. Shachvu Avu Veimera, she says. His father and mother of Papa died. So we see again, obviously, Abaya didn't have bad intentions. He was just excited by Rav Papa being able to be so sharp. And he says, obviously, it has to do with the fact that your father and mother are helping you. He looked at them with the wrong way, and right away they died. This is an example that, uh, uh, that the, the stipler brings from an, for excitement that could hurt somebody. Another, way, another one is in Bochot Nunchet, that over there, the rabbi says, Chashavtu nalai keshitin ravevan, they thought, he said to them that, he, that he said three brachot on the rabbi that came in front of him. And they were excited to see how smart he is that he was able to pick all these three brachot to say. What happened next? He looked, they looked at him in the wrong way that he seems to appear so smart. And also with that, they heard, they heard him. <laughs> says the stipler, this is like an honest that they heard him in such a way because you can't control your excitement when you see something very, very exciting. You see something that marmorizes you and therefore you show the excitement that you can't stop and you can't block it. And therefore that happens in a split second that could hurt somebody. This is one category of people that can hurt other people just by the fact that they see the success that they have. Second category is You see, you look at the other person with a hakpada. You're not trying to punish him, but you feel that he did something wrong or you feel could be that goes under the jealousy part. You see a person that's doing something that shouldn't be done. Or second category that goes along with this category is somebody that is very successful and causes others to feel jealous of him. So he, the stipler goes with the, with the examples to be makpid on the other person, which means you feel that he did something wrong and you look at him in such a way that why did you do that? And the Gemara in Shabbat, Lamed Dalet, famous Gemara that Rav Shimon Bar Yochai was, was in Galut, was in exile for a long, long time because Rav Yudha Ben Gerim spoke out what he heard the Rav Shimon uh, Bar Yochai saying to the Romans, or he got to the Romans, as Tosfot says, slowly, slowly, not that he went to the Romans, but he spoke it out and he got to the Romans, and because of that, Rav Shimon Bar Yochai had to leave and go to the cave for so many years. So now, when he came out and he saw Yudha Ben Gerim, he couldn't believe a dying Kayam, such a person, is still alive. He was makpid on him. He didn't want to punish him, but he felt, because of him I was so long gone, so therefore he looked at him in the wrong way, and he became Gal Shalatzamot, he became a pile of bones, and that caused him to die. Another Gemara is in Brachot Nunchet, Rav Sheshet, Natan Enav Be'ut Duki. Well, there was a tzduki that said words to Rav Sheshet that he should have said. He spoke to him in a disrespectful way. Rav Sheshet looked at him in a kpeda. He was makpid on him. He saw that he did something wrong. And because of that, I said, Gal Shalatzamot again. He became a pile of bones. So we see again the examples of being makpid on another person. In Yevamot, we found such a thing that in Yevamot Memhei, Be'ahu de'atra de'le Ravtuva, there was a person that was disturbing of Tufa. He wanted him to, to, to give him his daughter to marry. He kept on nagging him. He looked at him in the wrong way. 
for the fact that he's doing something wrong over here, that he keeps on nagging. And therefore, that kpeda caused him to die. Nach nafshe. Another Gemara in Baba Batra, Ha'ut al-Mid, that there was, there was a certain student, the Gemara says over there, that he saw wondrous things, and he couldn't believe that things should be like that. The Gemara says that when he finally saw that the rabbi that was saying what he was saying was correct, he came back to the rabbi, he came back to Rabbi Yochanan, um, and said to him, Amar le drosh rebi, lechan ha'el idrosh. Kasher amarta ken ra'iti. Rav Yochanan said things, and the student couldn't believe that that would be true. But when he was proven that this is true, he saw that things happened exactly as Rav Yochanan said. He came back to Rav Yochanan and he said, unbelievable, whatever you said was correct. So Rav Yochanan told him, Reika ilmale lo ra'ita lo emanta, Rabbi Yochanan told him, Reika means to say an empty vessel. The only reason you believe what I say is because you saw it in your own eyes. You don't believe what I'm saying. Otherwise, because of that, you're not deserving. And he looked at him at the wrong way because he was melagal divrei chachamim. You don't believe divrei chachamim. You don't believe the wise words that the, the, the chachamim tell you. Natan enav and asa gal shel atzamot also him, this kpeda caused him to become a pile of bones. Here we see again the same idea in Baba Batra. So it says the stipler, nirad de bechol hani lo haya tana poel be'ad de natan enav kederch sh'ayin hara poel. He says this is not the same category as the ayin hara. Ayin hara, as we explained just before, is a separate category that he doesn't go into, and that is jealousy, ayin hara. You look at somebody, in the Ayin Ara, we have a shiur on Ayin Ara that works apparently not so far from the, the way we're saying right now, not so much different, but it's a subcategory of what we're talking about. He says it's not exactly the same. Which means over here, it's not in this, it doesn't work, the punishment or the, the the way things are accomplished here are different, Ayin Ara, and this, uh, this thing that, of Kpeda. Because the Kpeda, it seems like, says the stipler, it's some kind of psak din on a person that you were wrong, and I'm Makpid on you, and you should be punished for it. And because of that, in Shamaim, they punish that person. But not that he puts the punishment into it, rather only that the Kpeda goes from the Chacham, and in Shamaim, they take that as a psak din and they punish him. Umishmayu de askimu psak din eshel ze atano amora, umishmaya anshu, vecholka e gavna lo avit shu misur. Kevan shezen e nash al pior ad bed din shel mala. Not that the rabbi punished him, the rabbi only looked at him in such a way, and in Shamaim they understood that's a psak din that we need to punish him. But not that the rabbi punished him. And then you have the third category. And that is when the rabbi means to punish. When you have such a tana, you have such a amora that looks at the other person in a way that means and says, I want you to be punished. And this is what we have the third way as he explains. Suk shlishi shayu umrim behedya sheploni yanesh kach vekach. Kea devar hedya da amar lev rabba bevrachot. Rava said about him. Yera avad elim sar bidad de malchuta. Rava said about him. Let that person, bar hedya, be are uh, uh, given to the Malchut, which means let him get caught by the government and punished for what he's doing. Gemara in Azir Nun Zayin, Chova Tikberinu Levne. And so this Gemara says that Chova, that's the woman, should bury her children. And that was a curse, and that was a punishment that the rabbi said, and that's exactly what happened. Another way, another place is in Shabbat, Kufret. Rav said about Shmuel, Shmuel had a certain uh, thing in mind when he was causing Rav to, ha- to be in pain. So Rav didn't know that Shmuel had that positive intention. He didn't know Shmuel yet. So he said the following, Man de metzaran lo lebne. Vechen have, says the Gemara. Whoever is giving me that pain should not have boys. And that's exactly what happened to Shmuel. All these 
says the stipler, Pashut, Kolhani lo avederach klala. You might think that maybe he cursed him. He says that's possible. That's not possible to say. Why? Because one is not allowed to curse his friend. It's asur lekalel chavero afilu beloshem. This is halacha. And therefore what's going on over here is derech tfila nachar shechlitu shelu chayavim onesh zeh. Vabedin shel mala kama anishi velo zeh haomer. Which means the following. This is different than the second category that the, the rabbi didn't mean to punish at all. He just looked at it as a kpeda, you did something wrong. And in Shamaim, they gave a psak din that this person needs to be punished. But over here, it's more direct. He says that the person should get punished for what he's doing. And once the rabbi says that, in Shamaim, they do as the rabbi says. But it's not a curse. It doesn't curse him that something bad should be given to him. Rather, he punishes him. So we see over here that people have that power. Obviously, it has to be people like the Chachamim, like the Tanaim, like the Moraim. Not every person on the street has such powers. On a cursing, could be that that works on a different level, and that will speak on a different time. How, when, when somebody curses his friend, how does that work, and how could that be accomplished? But over here, we're saying categories that were given to Chachamim, Tanaim, big people that have those supernatural powers, and therefore they were able to accomplish what they accomplished in those three different examples.